this idea of thinking not necessarily taking place solely inside the brain or inside something we might call a mind uh, is also found in the writings of Max Wellmans. Max Wellmans was until recently the chair of the experiential psychology wing of the British Psychological Society. And he's written quite a bit about, uh, well, first, per, it's, it's, it's neural college of consciousness stuff right now, but I think his, most of his writing is to do with first-person perspective consciousness, how we might bring in first-person perspective narratives, uh, phenomenological accounts of, uh, into, into, a psychology, into a psychological understanding of, of, of human experience. But one of the ideas that he came up with, I think it's either called neural monism or neutral monism. It also involves this idea that I've mentioned before about thinking not simply happening inside the brain or inside the mind, but also a kind of uh, looping outside of the mind to embrace the body and um, events and objects and experiences out there in the world. And what he, he really comes at it from a, a sort of reductive position. He says that we, our understanding of seeing something, for example, visual experience, is uh, what we tend to do is we tend to imagine that what's happening is we look at the tree or we look at the cat, use the example of the cat in his writing, we look at the cat and we tend to imagine that somehow that cat is represented in our brain, he says. It's represented. And then part of our brain kind of looks at that representation and that's the cat. It's a sort of an idealist view that the brain, ex the cat exists, the image of the cat exists in our brain exists in our brain, and it's that that we're looking at. He says this is the representation of the cat. He says that's wrong. These are all sorts of things. But I think it's just not the And if evolution has produced anything, it's through processes of, of parts of it. It's not wasteful. So he says, why you know, would the brain produce a representation of a tree? There's a particularly fine tree over there. Why would my brain produce a representation of that tree when there's a perfectly good tree over there? Why would you duplicate that tree? So that's the first thing. This is a representation of visual consciousness. The second and, and, and more uh, damning and, um, criticism of that sort of visual consciousness is that if that tree is represented in my mind, and then part of my mind is kind of looking at the tree, it's just looking at the image of the tree. Then how is that how is that internal process of looking at the tree? It just defers the problem. And worse, it defers it to a kind of homunculus, a little person inside my brain that's somehow looking at the image of the tree that's in this representation represented in my cognition. And so if you accept that and have to ask, well, how is that process that's happening inside the homunculus happening? And we're into an infinite regress. So those, that representationist account of visual consciousness, says Belden and others, of course, is is wrong for those reasons. Not good. Not a good explanation. A better explanation, Belden says, is that um, there isn't this kind of dualism. There isn't the tree over there and the tree in here. Uh, the tree over there may or may not exist. As long as the tree is in here, I can somehow uh, employ cognitive processes to visualise it. He says, rather than have that dualism, there's a, a monism. There is only one tree, and there it is. That's the tree. And when I look at the tree, and I have a visual conscious experience of the tree, my visual conscious experience also includes the tree. Thought is tree, but you use the word thought. In this context, it means visual conscious. My thought of the tree also includes the tree. And of course, the light bouncing off the tree, going into my eyes, going through all the procedures that one has to go through in order to be able to see anything. So, a thought in that case, an experience, an element of consciousness, isn't something that we have to do, it's not a part of the account. It's also, okay, it's over there, my thought is moving out of my head. I'll say, I'll continue the sentence, but it's not right. My thoughts are looping out of my head, embracing the tree, and then somehow looping back. I say it's not right because that's not the intention. My thought is uh, the, the thought that I am experiencing 
includes the tree and everything else in that particular loop. Where it originates, I just don't know.